Welcome to the Fishing Musicians Fishing and Travel Adventures. Welcome to the Fishing Musicians. My name is Glenn Ferguson, your host, and this week we are back in the Bathurst, New Brunswick area, my hometown and the hometown of the Fishing Musicians. Bathurst, New Brunswick is located on the northeast coast of New Brunswick. We have some great places to visit. Governor's Resort with Mark McCollum and also Daryl Knowles from Stonehaven. We bring you lobster fishing on his boat called the Salty Dog. The first portion of this episode, we are at Governor's, so please keep those guitars in tune as we'll be right back. The Fishing Musicians is brought to you by Capital Airways, Atlantic Canada's premier air charter service, and Ferguson Audio Productions, one of Atlantic Canada's finest video and audio post-production studios. Welcome to the Fishing Musicians Fishing and Travel Adventures. Welcome back to the Fishing Musicians and we are heading to Governor's Resort, a one hour drive from Bathurst, New Brunswick, up the Highway 180, aka the Road Resources, to Governor's Resort. Governor's Resort is unique for many reasons. It is located on a river system that is virtually untouched with very little pressure from angling. It lies at the foot of the Appalachian Mountain Range near the Provincial Park of Mount Carleton, and it is one of the finest handcrafted log resorts in the province of New Brunswick. I actually started this back in uh, 2001. Um, actually acquired the old Governor's, uh, old Governor's Lodge down on Governor's Pool here, is about five miles down river. Um, Quite a few people tried to take a go out of it there, and it's just so inconvenient of a spot and uh, hard to get to, and not much traffic there in the summer. It's too isolated. So I ended up getting involved with uh, DNR and trying to acquire this lease here at the crossroads at Popple. And they agreed and they gave me this lease, so I uh, put up this new building here for a lodge and cabins and started in uh, November 2002 and opened for the halfway through the Skidoon season in 2003. We call it white gold. The snow comes first. It lasts the longest and accumulates the most, making this part of the province an unforgettable year-round tourism destination. Governor's Resort have two separate log cabins divided into sections of two to accommodate guests up to 24 persons. Each unit includes a living room, full bathroom, shower, and sleeps a maximum of six people. Governor's Resort was built and tailored all by hand. Even the floors are heated, and now they are one of the few resorts in the world that can boast that they offer solar electricity, a leader in conservation. Their main lodge is fully functional for corporate events and staff parties. A large kitchen and 4,000 feet of open space make it perfect for your corporate getaway or staff party. And the location, well, you can't get much better than this. The Pisgah River is a, you know, she's a beautiful river, and. Uh... It's literally untouched here. It's like you said, you can run from Mount Carlton Park actually to me without even seeing the camp as far, as far as I know. And uh, it's just beautiful country up here. And each night at sundown, whether it be at your cabin or at the front deck sipping a nice cocktail at Governor's, the sun will say goodbye to another day dipping below the Appalachian Mountains. Well, we had an awesome sleep at Governor's Resort. You can sleep up to 24 people here at one time, corporate events, whatever you want to do. We're here for the fishing. The Nipisiguit River is full of great pools, lots of pools right by Governor's Resort. So we're just down from the camp on the old upriver road here. We're gonna hit one of these pools that hasn't been uh, fished in a few days anyway. There's lots of trout in the river. I just want one two pounder, that's all I'm gonna do. So we're gonna go down, check out this pool. I've never fished before. Just watch it for a little bit, see what action, what kind of movement the fish are making, and then we'll uh, do our plan of attack from there. Nothing really to worry about in these woods, folks. Gotta watch with the bear. There's black bear here, a lot of moose. Never get in between a moose and a young especially a bear and a chunk, but uh, for, most, uh, for the most part, you're safe here, for the most part. Hmm. Let's see what this pool looks like. I've been through here before, the canoe, but I've never actually stopped and fished, so let's have a look. Very nice, Mark was right. Nice pool. 
The best time to go fishing for speckled trout at Governor's Resort on an Episcopate is the month of June. You can also fish July and August. Governor's Resort offer many packages for the fishing adventure. One of my favorite adventures is being driven up to Mount Carleton Provincial Park, dropped off and canoeing down the river, camping in a wilderness setting overnight, fishing as you go, and then arriving back at Governor's Resort the next day. Oh, nice one. Okay, folks, we got our first fish here. Nice little trout. They're moving around us. A nice little trout. Not huge, but it's, at least I'm not gonna get skunked again on this show. So you see that I've got it, and I'll show you the uh, small little trout. Oh, easily released. Fishing in June on the Nipisiguit is a great time. Fish, big or small, are grabbing at the fly on every cast. I've seen fish in here up to seven pounds. I'm only here for an hour, and I can tell you I hooked about 15 to 20 fish. None that big, but still a whole lot of fun. Little trout, they're getting bigger. Watch how easy that is to release, folks. You just take your fly, just like that. And another trout gone to live another day. See that fly, folks? Now, can you see that in the water? I'll try to watch your little fish come up and grab that. This was doing a while ago with that last trout. Let's see that. Oh, I got him. Yes, sir. He's on. Oh, he's gone. Whoa. Let's try that again. Oh, he hammered that one. Yeah, that's a nice one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Woohoo! I don't need to change flies. They keep getting bigger and bigger. They're not big, but check that out in the water if I can. Look at how they swim in the water. Come here. That's your trout, folks. That is your speckled brook trout. Look at that fella. Hey, I thought I was getting skunked for the last 10 minutes. And lo and behold, another one. They are small, I know. Wow, look at these sardines, aren't they big, but they are beautiful. And you know, you're allowed to keep five of them here. And it's probably better if you get uh, five small ones, keep the small ones, only five. Some people come out here, they don't adhere to the law. See that? Gone. They keep 30, 40. There's a reason why there's a limit on the amount of trout you can keep. It's very basic. The big ones breed and have the most eggs in them, the females. That's why you throw the big ones back. You keep five little ones that, so that you can keep the uh, healthy populations in the river. You throw them back, you debarb your hook. It's very simple, folks. The Department of Natural Resources and the government are trying to cut people off from the recreational angling. That's not what they're trying to do. They're trying to maintain the stocks in these rivers. Everyone that fishes in these rivers enjoys our, uh, our natural resources here in the province and we all have to work together to make sure that the populations and the, the viability of these rivers sustain themselves by adhering to the laws that are set forth by the government. And there's a reason, like I said, buy fish. Don't go in and take 30, 40 of these little sardines. That's, what's the point? You want a nice trout, go to the supermarket. Keep one, two, keep them, eat them, that's fine. But throw them back. Be barbie hooks. Practice conservation, folks. It is really important. You're watching the Fishing Musicians. We've had a great trip here at Governor's Resort. We are offering corporate retreats here. You can fly in a helicopter here. You can land in a plane in Bathurst. From anywhere in the world, you're accessible here. We are in the middle of nowhere. You're not going to see another car here. You're not going to see a camp on this river for 60 miles. Full of trout, as you see. I've only been fishing here an hour. And I have to go. I have to get back to my real job. It's been a real good time here. Thanks, Mark. Keep those reels screaming. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Fishing Musicians Fishing and Travel Adventures. Next, we are up the coast from Bathurst, New Brunswick and Stonehaven for some lobster fishing. This is the local bait that they're using here. Uh, it's mackerel out of Rhode Island, uh, the USA. Uh, we haven't had a lot of local bait of our own in the last uh, two years. So now we're using the frozen stuff that's brought in and we bring ship it in here each day by uh, half ton or uh, the local truck to drop in. Folks, we're with Daryl Knowles. Daryl, it's a real pleasure having uh, the opportunity to go lobster fishing with you. This is the first time I've ever gone lobster fishing, folks. 
You know all those delicacy lobster you get in Toronto and all across the world? Some of the best lobster fishing is right here near my hometown of Bathurst. And we're gonna go catch them. I've never done it before. I eat them all the time. Oh yes, oh yeah. They sure picked a nice morning. It's a beautiful morning. So how many traps do you have out here? We have uh, 300 traps and uh, we go through them every day. 300 traps? 300 traps. Uh, each buoy has two traps or three. I have uh, half and half, 150 feet. And this is my uh, buoy. We're coming up to here. Uh, Mike catches the buoy and we pop her in the holler. You gotta, you gotta bring that good. Oh, oh. No lobster. That's it. Oh, look at that. Just open the door and a lot of them respond. These are called buried lobsters and those are your reproduction. Look at that. Yeah. What's that spawn there? Those, those yeah. eggs or something? Yeah, it's all eggs. And uh, that's what this is. The biologists say that that these can see, yeah. they'll snap. Stick your finger in there. Yeah. Look at them flapping too, eh? Yeah. Now this here, this measure right. here, this measure here, like this is the way we measure. That's our canner lobster from there to here. Yep. And you go from the eye back to there. So, so that's good? Once that goes over, if, if, if it goes over the body to the tail, it's too small. Okay. You just fire them back. And we rebate, and that's the routine. Well. Bear warning, make sure you take your grab all before you get out in the boat. Oh, don't stop the boat. Get your sea legs, Billy. Bathurst region and the Chaleur Bay is full of culture, history, and beautiful landscape. Stonehaven is located on the Acadian Coastal Drive. It is like a journey back in time. Settlements of both English and Acadian French coexist in small little communities side by side and scattered throughout the coast. And I am one of those lucky ones that live in this area. Folks, you may be wondering why I'm not actually helping. It's not because I'm lazy. Well, I'm a little lazy, but it's a little early in the morning. I usually go to bed at this time, not get up. It's a little chilly. It's in June, but it's still a little chilly. But I'm not actually allowed to touch the traps. It's uh, federal regulations that uh, you have to be licensed to do this. So I can just be an innocent bystander and look along. And uh, But I'm hoping that he... Maybe just because of my little help, they can give me a couple of those lobsters over there. They're freaking tasty. Okay, Mike, bring me up a canner, okay? Make the wife happy. Give her a best shot. Make the wife happy. I might get lucky tonight if we get one of those there. We, we gotta get you to catch a buoy. Catch a, <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Here, you can. I can do that. You can do that, you can do that. Oh. There's a nice big meal. Some nice ones there. Yeah, well that's when I haul the traps in. There seem to yeah. be more lobsters in them. Actually, when they come out of the trap there, we should Clamp them right away. Now this Look year, at the size of the claw on that thing. This year now, you always like you got to get your chomper claw right away. Yeah. Because, uh, that's where the power is. Oh. Whoa. Oop. That'd be about a. I would say a three and a half, four pounder. Nice. Yeah. Tasty. Oh yes. Okay. Drop her down. 
His family had been fishing lobster in this area for generations, and there are stories of difficulties getting boats into the water, traps being lost, large storms, and it's only until recently he has been able to purchase a new boat and incorporate some of the newer technology. Daryl has lived in Stonehaven for most of his life, that is, when he wasn't playing hockey professionally. And did you know that Daryl was a cast member on the movie Slapshot with the Hansons? And after his successful international hockey career, he's back in Stonehaven to continue the family tradition. Oh, well, we, uh, we make them ourselves. Really? And uh, the only the only part that we buy is your is your bows here, which are ash, which bends easy. And I buy the webbing for the front. Like everybody has different uh, different models of traps. And uh, these are hardwood palings on the bottom. That's your ash, and then we have spruce slats. And uh, we buy our wire and our skate patches, and, and we do all the lacing and the building ourselves. And I would say about seven, eight years, like your trap's pretty well done. Really? You know. So like, they come in the trap here now. Let's just explain this to people. That, okay. And I'm, I'm kind of a. Okay, they come in here. They come in these heads here, and then they feed on the bait. Yeah. Then they, when they try and get out, they can't. So this is called the back, this is called your kitchen part. And this is the back parlor. Okay. So, so when they get back there, it's pretty hard to get yeah, back Yeah, once out. they're in there, they're stuck for good. Like sometimes you haul a trap up and there's no bait left. So, I mean, yeah. there has to have been a yeah. lot of small lobsters in there. And these are these are your escape patches there. That's government uh, rule there. Okay, there so back. it gives the uh, the small ones a chance so that they can get bigger. Here you got to make sure that you have uh, liability for the future. Oh, there's a couple of nice ones. Oh, look at that. Oh, is that a male or female? It's a female. How can you tell if it's a female? Get the soft flippers up here. Okay. And a white tail. And a white tail. And a smaller claw. So even if they're not spawned, we still have to throw them back because they're the big females. And this is the measure that the government came out with. If it's in between this here, that line there, and it's over this here, over your next, I think it's uh, 129 millimeter to 115, that goes back into the sea. Even if it's not spawned. Really? Well, yeah. It's a big that, one. And that's your reproduction. That's about five pounds or so. Sweet. See you next year. Folks, we've had a great day with the fishing musicians, Daryl and Mike. What a wicked time lobster fishing, my first time. This is what it's all about. This big fella is gonna be tasty for someone. Keep your guitars in tune. We'll be right back with the Fishing Musicians. episode you can't catch a fish or a lobster if you're trapping in the water after you catch the lobster you gotta cook them and you have to eat them that's the best part these are these are a canner lobster there was a 
there was a few markets that was mixed up with them, but I like these, these are around a pound. Very good eating lobster. There, so now, now is what I do now, is just uh, take these, these two gallons of water, put it in here. I bring my water to a uh, boil, I put in two cups, I use a cup per gallon, and I bring it to a boil, and, uh, and then after it comes to a boil, you put your lobsters in, and then you wait for another boil, you wait till it boils again, and then uh, you time it. There, there it's at a full boil, okay? So what I do is close that down, turn this burner down, once it starts to boil over, you got a good boil on. Right, so. And from there, I'm gonna give it 17 minutes because they're a little bigger. Time that. Like so. And then, the reason you have that, you don't forget. <laughs> and over boil. boiling there like I is what I do is uh, mix up a salt brine and I uh, I put about a half a cup of uh, maybe not even there it's only a small batch just to salt the water a bit like so and turn that on ice cold water and then after the lobsters are done that I just put them in there it stops them cooking right away and then they start to soak up the juice there is it. Okay, and drop them in. Okay. Yeah. Easy. All right. Make sure they're, make sure they're underwater good. When I take them out of the out of the water after they're soaked, I lay them on their backs. There, you got them cooked. It's time to eat them. Daryl and his wife Linda have got everything set up for us. But how do you open these things? Well, let's learn from a pro. Yep. Now, a lot of them use like nutcrackers, but the old fashioned way is right like this here, top of the knuckle. Okay? Watch your finger, watch your finger. There, break that, break that off. There's your meat. And that is one tasty lobster. Thanks to Daryl and Linda for hosting us. And also thanks to Mark McCollum at Governor's Resort. If you're looking for more information on this resort, visit our website at www.fishingmusicians.com and the link's on the front page. Next week we continue our East Coast adventure in Bathurst, New Brunswick. Fishing inland and fishing offshore. It's a surf and turf adventure. My name is Glenn Ferguson, your host. Thanks for tuning in. Conserve our waters, keep those guitars in tune, and keep the peace. Okay, I got one more fish to catch and I gotta, I gotta go. I keep saying that. Uh, come on! For f sake! It's hard to do a fishing show without bringing your tackle with you. Well, I can continue to fish until that time. I am the Ziggy Derby. I believe I was made for this job. Oops, it smells like low tide around here. You fart? Oh, that's the camera guy, Mike. <laughs> Told you not to eat that rotten cod. Chuck <laughs> the big whale! It's the runaway starfish. <laughs>